I already know that my main audience for this is uh, English teachers who don't want to teach today and uh, kids who left their computer on at 3 a.m. So my question for anyone listening is, when you were a kid, did you ever learn about the importance of financial responsibility, self-confidence, uh, gender inequality, uh, maybe even the concept of death? No? I didn't think so, and no offense to your parents, but you definitely need a replacement for that lack of education in your life. And I'm not saying go ahead and replace your parents like the 2006 show, The Replacements, where you replace any parent using Flinko. No, but I am saying that TV could help. My name is Mick Soria, I was born in 2003, and growing up I didn't have the most friends, I know, shocker, but uh, when I, because I didn't have any social outlets, I would just stay indoors and watch TV, with the channels still engraved in my head, 35, 65, 66, and 70, which were PBS, Disney Channel, Cartoon Network, and uh, Nickelodeon. And before you get started, I already know that Boomerang was a thing, but I wasn't rich, so don't sue me. And while you may think that these shows were simply babysitters for your kids, they actually acted more like parents helping and teaching your kids along the way. And I'm not saying go ahead and strap a TV to your kid's place and set them down the hill calling him Kate Patowski, but I am saying that TV could definitely help with metacognitive strategies in our children. And before I begin, I know I say TV a lot, but I just want to clear up this real quick. I'm not talking about the physical television set, no. I don't say that you should take a 30-inch to the park or have it pick you up from a baseball game. Believe me, I've tried. I'm talking about the shows that are on TV, you know, they can be found on streaming services now. So, anyways, I'll continue. First, let's talk about children's entertainment. And children's entertainment has been as old as TV itself, with uh, shows like Kukla Friend and Ollie, Howdy Doody, Life with Snarky Parky, and wait, as you can notice, all these are marionette puppet shows, which is probably because they haven't seen the Goosebumps episode, Not a Living Dummy, but whatever. Uh, anyways, continuing on, these shows weren't very educational, so kids weren't actually gaining anything from it. Uh, this actually led to the creation of of the Children's Television Workshop, which was created in 1968 to find a new solution to teach our kids in a more modern way. And, but let me back it up a bit. Um, the Harvard Center of the Developing Child has found that 90% of brain development happens before the age of five. This just shows how crucial it is to give your kid educational material when they're young. And now, I'm not saying treat your kid to a secret laboratory like he's little Jimmy Neutron. He will not brain blast his way through college. But I am saying that you need to provide your kid with educational material. Uh, this, here's the problem with that. Babies, and kids in particular, do not pay attention very well. Like, babies, you can cover your hands behind your face and reveal them again, and they think you've gone and left like you're Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Uh, knowing this, Jim Henson teamed up with the Children's Television Workshop to create Sesame Street. Now, everybody's heard of Sesame Street, from Bert and Ernie to Cookie Monster, even Oscar the Grouch. Uh, the fun thing about Sesame Street is that it was very family-oriented, and they were singing and dancing so kids would better pay attention. Uh, also, most of the characters were relatively the same age as the kids watching, so instead of like a parent talking down to their kids, they were like talking with them. Uh, this helped with one example, like Big Bird, who's the age of six, who helped deliver the news about Hooper's death. Uh, this gave kids to, a chance to learn the grieving process so they can continue it and hold it for the rest of their lives. Another example is Julia, the first mother to have autism, which broke barriers in that category, uh, and through awareness studies, we actually, they've actually found that Julia is known by 55% of Americans. Uh, this just shows how widespread of an audience TV has, how easy it is to get education out there. And I know that I can talk about Sesame Street until they kick me off the stage, so I'll wrap it up a bit. Right now, Sesame Street is talking about female empowerment, hygiene, incarceration, uh, they're talking about drug addiction, and they're dealing with the problems of COVID-19. They're also 
those monsters down and want to these sesame started talking about financial responsibility and you know that you can trust these monsters because the fact that big bird has found real estate in upper west manhattan just shows he's made some conscious financial decisions uh, all of this is on their sesame workshop don't worry. moving on to other shows we have shows on nick, nick jr like Blues Clues, which taught problem solving, but really taught everyone how to use the mail system, which was a brand new thing to everyone. Uh, <laughs> there was also shows like Dora, which taught Spanish at a very young age, and I know everybody likes to trash on her because Diego is the better brother, cousin, but she taught Spanish, which is incredibly beneficial to teach at a young age because it's very easy to learn when they're younger. Uh, and right now, Nick Jr. is doing something called Beyond the Backpack, which can help with STEM opportunities, family engagement, before they even get into kindergarten. Uh, moving on to another channel, we have PBS with Wild Kratz, which taught about animals. Uh, we have shows like Word Girl, a superhero defeated her enemies using her words. Uh, but I much more prefer Martha Speaks, who uh, was a dog who ate a bowl of alphabet soup and now could speak English, and she taught new vocabulary to kids every day. Uh, there was also Arthur, who just taught kids how to laugh and play. Uh, Super Y, who was a bunch of group of fairy tale characters, and superhero, who taught kids how to read. Uh, there was also Cyber Chase, which main purpose was to teach kid math, kids math, but uh, what they actually ended up doing was teach kids how to use a computer because everybody was going to pbs.com to search for the newest cyber chase game without their parents' permission. I'm sorry, Mom. Uh, and I know what you're probably thinking. Yeah, I knew. Cool beans. There's children's education on TV. Yeah, okay. But what you may not know is that TV can also help in other ways, mainly socially. When I was a kid, I was incredibly lonely. Yeah, I wasn't kidding about that. I moved from Oxnard to Camarillo in the second grade, so if you thought I had friends before, now I had basically none. Uh, so if I wasn't eating a tuna sandwich or finding some sticks in the backyard, I'd just watch TV by myself. And I'd continue to do that until I found that other kids at lunch actually were also watching TV and were talking about it. I ended up going in with those groups of friends, and we talk about Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, because I loved explosions. And if we wanted to see a little Jamie Lynn Spears, go over to Nickelodeon and watch Zoe 101, maybe some Drake and Josh, or Nets Declassified. And the funny thing about Nets Declassified is, while everybody was prepared for middle school to deal with the teachers, um, the real problem was actually the kids. Uh, moving on, as you can see, TV's important. TV is, I know that in, on the internet you can get everything at a click of a button, but TV really shows a seminar of ideas of creativity and imagination, something it's hard to find nowadays, and you know, it's not nice to trash on TV when TV's basically been there your entire life, raising you and teaching you rights and wrong, and also just making you laugh and cry, so that's no way to treat your TV dad. As you can see, TV has kind of gotten me here. Uh, I know I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for iCarly teaching me self-confidence or Johnny Bravo telling me how to get a girlfriend or maybe even Chowder saying that there's more than just McDonald's. Uh, and don't even get me started on Spongebob. Uh, I'm sure you can tell that TV's basically molded me. Uh, TV's important to me. And I know that other people are going to talk about more serious subjects, but I hope you can find a good laugh and chuckle knowing that TV is super rad to me. Uh, I think it's so rad in fact that I've been working on getting in TV and movies as myself. I draw cartoons when I was, I've been drawing cartoons since I was a kid with uh, little comics and some things you might be scared of. <laughs> uh, TV has basically been there all my whole life and I just wanted to talk about it. Thank you for listening. Now, <laughs> go watch some TV.